With just hours to go before the application process was expected to open up, the federal government dropped some big news. It won't be accepting applications for its family reunification program on January 1st because it needs more time to rework the troubled application process. That means anyone hoping to move a parent or grandparent to Canada now has to wait for further instructions. That's a painful delay for people like Beryl Hughes. She is an 87-year-old widow from the UK trying to join her daughter Jillian, a Canadian citizen in Ottawa. Her daughter recently lost her her husband as well. Hughes already tried to apply for reunification last January, but she was unsuccessful. She'd been waiting for January 1st to reapply. It's extremely frustrating and it's something that is in the back of your mind all the time. You can't plan anything. You can't think ahead. And I must admit, I'm a bit afraid. I'm afraid of having to go back by myself. Here to discuss what the change means for families is Richard Curland. He's a lawyer and policy analyst, and he joins us from Vancouver. So, Mr. Curland, we heard one story there, but I wonder what is the broader effect of the federal government essentially hitting the pause button on this family reunification program just two days before January 1st? Well, it causes stress and a sense of unfairness in families who were promised uh, that the door would be open in January 2020 to bring in a loved family member, parent or grandparent. This uh, program has seen a lot of different uh, iterations in terms of how people could apply over the last few years. What is it that people were expecting was actually going to happen this go around in January? They'd have a chance. Uh, the system allows individuals to provide their intention to sponsor by completing a form electronically and then the draw was supposed to occur later. That's what happened last year. Unfortunately, a bit of a design glitch. Uh, the uh, strategists at uh, the Immigration Canada thought they were designing a selection system for a uh, rock concert ticket output. <laughs> the entire supply of available 2019 parent-grandparent uh, visa applications gone in under nine minutes. So it was a salmon run not a Canadian immigration sponsorship program. And as you say, that uh, situation, the, the challenges there became apparent in a matter of minutes last oh boy, year. Yeah. What, uh, and in fact, the, the iterations that they tried previous to that, I think, uh, faced some challenges as well, right? A large backlog when it was a first come, first serve basis, oh. the lottery system, uh, a lot of people didn't like. What signals had we gotten from the federal government about um, how it might be improved in 2020? Well, the corporate culture at Immigration Canada consistently over the years is to not consult, not chat with private technical specialists who engage some common sense. Even last year, had private sector, the, the immigration bar been consulted, we would have pointed out the risks and dangers and pitfalls of having a 10-minute immigrant lottery system. Mm -hmm. So uh, right now, uh, it's political. Okay, so, so what, what I hear you saying is they should have given you a call uh, if you had called them. What, what would you have said? What, what do you think they could be doing to make well, this work better? Th there are two ways you can fix it. You either make the pie bigger and allow instead of 20,000, 50,000 uh, parent-grandparent applications, but you have to add the deadly secret sauce. Mm -hmm. People who are sponsored, the taxpayer pays just for Medicare. Those sponsoring families are on the hook for 20 years for everything but Medicare. So this is not an immigration policy problem. This is a group insurance problem. Who's going to pay? And the political solution to all of this is to add on a group insurance premium. We've already set a standard that you have to be wealthy in order to sponsor parents. Most of these cases require minimum $70,000 a year income reported to CRA during the three years prior to application. So the principle that everyone can sponsor is out the window in Canada. Instead, what we also need is a kind of $1,000, $2,000 a year payment as a group insurance to offset Medicare costs. That way, taxpayer doesn't pay. Do politicians want to do this? That's the core issue. The reason this is so delicate is that these sponsors are located across Canada in the marginal swing constituencies, the constituencies that make or break a government. 
And <laughs> even in our minority government, it's better to have no decision than make a decision and lose valuable writings. So the politicians have to have a real debate, come up with technical policy solutions, not how to better run a lottery, but how to adjust the core problem who pays for the parents and grandparents? Then uh, we can fix this. Instead of waiting 15 years as in the past or now, you have to win the lottery, but there's uh, five times as many uh, tickets as places deal going. So you can be never picked as a, as a parent and grandparent over a decade. That's also not fair. We should not be running a Canadian immigration system based on chance. The rule of law requires predictable results from predictable behavior and rolling the dice to see whether or not you get family reunification is patently unfair and the wrong way to run a, a show. And I should say at this point that we did ask uh, both the immigration minister and, and uh, the government in general if they could put forward anyone to speak to us about this. We didn't uh, get a positive response from them, although we will ask again. When you talk about wanting to know what's going to happen going forward, that still seems mm. to be something of a mystery. What we were told yesterday is that the minister intends to issue further instructions relating to the intake management process for parents and grandparents program by April 1st, 2020 at the latest. So what will yourself uh, and other people who have uh, an investment in this process be looking for going forward? What do you expect well, to gonna, hear next? Uh, uh, the good thing about ministerial instructions is that they're in writing, clear, and hopefully will provide lead time. Not a ministerial instruction on a Friday at 5 p.m. saying that Saturday morning uh, you can push the send button. That doesn't work. Allow people the chance to organize. Give them time to prepare. Um, I can see that there will be a continued lottery system. Uh, and if that's the case, I would very much like to see oversight. It's not enough to say, trust me, I promise to pick every eighth or tenth application for family reunification. Someone has to monitor that process that is not connected to Immigration Canada. It's um, Reagan to Gorbachev, trust but verify. Everyone deserves a fair chance. Even in our Canadian lottery system, we have oversight. In the immigration lottery system, we need public oversight as well when that ministerial instruction comes out. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for your time today. Richard Kurland. Pleasure. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.